Hello everyone and welcome back to another Sensei series. Today we are looking at the five most important musical scales. The focus of this video will be on the theoretical aspect though I will spend a bit of time on the practicality as well. I'll put timestamps in the description if you feel the need to jump around. Without further ado, let's dive in. First of all, what is a scale? Wikipedia defines it as a set of musical notes ordered by pitch. A scale will generally repeat every octave. That is, if we take notes starting on a C, once we get to the C an octave higher, the notes will repeat again. Given that definition, there are countless possible scales out there. The ones I'll focus on today are what I call bass scales, not to be confused with bass scales. I believe the bass scales to be the most important ones because from them we can derive almost everything else. Think of them like primary colors. Once we have red, blue, and yellow, we can go on to create all the beautiful colors of the spectrum. The first and most important scale is the major scale. It's what the vast majority of Western music is composed using. From a very young age, it's ingrained in our musical psyche that the major scale sounds right, harmonious, or normal. Many of us first learn it as do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. If I were to raise or lower the sound of any of those notes, it might sound a little off. Let's try lowering the second note and see what it sounds like. Subconsciously, we expect music to be derived from that major scale, so when I change that second note, it really stands out. Having said that, a lot of great music will do some really interesting things by playing with that expectation. To understand a major scale and all the other scales we'll talk about today, we need to dissect the musical spacings between each note. Let's take a look at a keyboard where the notes are lined up very nicely. If I were to play all my notes between one C and the next C an octave higher, I get my lovely major scale. When we go from one key on the piano to the next, that's what's called a half step or half tone. Going up two keys on a piano is called a whole step or whole tone. From our first note C to our second note D, there's a black key in between. That means we're going up two keys, it's a whole step. From D to E, that's also a whole step. E to F has no key in between, so that's a half step. If we analyzed our entire scale, it would look like this. Now when it comes to music theory, some things take a little bit of time to sink in. It never hurts to go back and watch something again if you're not 100% clear. I also have a video that focuses purely on this subject, feel free to check it out. Okay, so we've got the spacings of our major scale. If any of those spacings change, it's no longer a major scale. We can also start our major scale on any note, not just C, assuming it follows the same pattern of whole steps and half steps. So let's replace our note letters with Roman numerals. Each number represents a degree of the scale. Now we aren't limited in terms of thinking of just one scale. From here, we can build chords off each scale degree. I won't go into detail about how we figure this out. You can find that information in my theory video. We can build three note chords, which we call triads, in which case our first chord would be major, our second minor, third minor, and so on. We can also build four note chords, called seven chords, in which case we would have the following. This pattern or sequence of chords stays the same no matter which key we're in. For example, the third chord is always minor, no matter if we're in the key of E flat, A, A flat, or whatever. With this information, we can do a ton. We can build chord progressions using this scale and play melodies over top. Here's an example. A major pentatonic is simply a reduced version of the major scale. The minor pentatonic is the same set of notes, but it starts on the six. We can also create modes using our major scale. That is when we play a major scale, but instead of starting it on the one and going up to the one like we have so far, we start on another scale degree and go up to that same scale degree an octave higher. For more info on that topic, I've got two videos dedicated purely to modes. There's also the option of creating bebop scales using our major scales. We do that by adding passing tones. All of this stuff we've looked at is built on the set of note spacings that creates our major scale. But we can also alter these note spacings, which brings me to my next bass scale, jazz minor. The jazz minor is almost identical to the major scale, but the third note is a half step lower. This creates a totally different sounding tonality. And with this, we can do all the stuff we did with our major scales. We can derive triads. Or seven chords. We can then write chord progressions using these, as well as melodies over top. <laughs> this 
this has a very different overall tonality than anything we could create using the major scale. With this, we also have a new set of modes, pentatonics, and bebop scales as well. Moving on to our next bass scale, very similar to the jazz minor, is the harmonic minor. With this, we have the same thing as our last scale, but the sixth note is now a half step lower. This creates a musical spacing of 1.5 steps between the 6th and 7th scale degrees, which is something we haven't found anywhere else and introduces an interesting sound. All the derivatives we found in the jazz minor can also be found here. Here's a chord progression and melody using the harmonic minor. Next on our list is the whole tone scale, and it's easy enough to remember because every scale degree is separated by one whole step. It's an interesting sounding scale, and since everything is evenly spaced, no note has more or less weight than the others. Because of that, it sounds like it could go on and on forever. You can use this scale whenever you see an augmented seventh chord, which is fairly rare. You'll also hear it used to create sound effects in many video games. Our next bass scale is similar to the whole tone scale in the sense that it's a repetitive pattern, the diminished scale. The scale is a half step followed by a whole step repeated until you reach the octave. It's called the half whole diminished scale. Alternatively, you can do the same thing, but you start on the whole step, followed by the half step, repeated to the octave. This is called the whole half diminished scale. Obviously, this will work nicely over diminished chords, or you can use the half whole over dominant seven chords to create a unique flavor. And those are the five most important musical scales. You'll be hard pressed to find any Western music that uses anything else. Now there's no rule that you only have to use one of these scales when composing or soloing. Your imagination is the limit. The best thing you can do now that you have this information is go and experiment. Get the scales under your fingers, try soloing with them, figure out the chords, and get the sounds in your ear. Music theory and scales should be thought of as tools that can open up a world of possibilities. Remember, these aren't rules, they are expectations, and you're free to play with them. Have fun with this stuff and let me know how it goes. Thank you for making it all the way through this video. If you need to watch this a couple of times, that's to be expected. This is fairly advanced stuff. If you want to help ensure a future for content like this, please consider heading over to my Patreon page where people People like you can get directly involved in supporting my channel. Thank you again for watching, I'm Samurai Guitarist and I will see you again soon.